about a week or so ago, I was looking around in Antarctica, and among the many finds was this thing that I had labeled ancient aircraft. Well, looking more into it and getting the measurements off of it, I'm convinced it's actually one of these three aircraft. Now, a lot of people don't realize, and they wouldn't necessarily, that there are three different versions of the SR-71, which is on the left. In the upper right, you have the A-12, which is widely known as the CIA version. It is a single-seater, as whereas the SR-71 has two. And in the lower right, probably the least known version is the YF-12, which is basically an SR-71 that can fire missiles, if you can imagine that. Now, I looked at all the measurements, and I looked at the images, and I'm pretty sure, I'm 99.95% sure this aircraft setting on the ground, on the ice in Antarctica, is one of these three aircraft. There's one other one I'm going to mention at the very end of the video that it could possibly be, but I really don't think that's the case, given the age of that aircraft. Now, let me show you the image first. I'll go ahead and close this out so you guys can get a good look at this. And I'll turn up the light. There we go. All right. As you can see, we have... It's a distinct image. I mean, when you look at it from a distance, it's pretty unmistakable. And I was really surprised. Of all of the finds, I thought this one would have been the one that everybody went crazy about. Because it's... I don't know how you look at this and see anything else, how you could possibly say, well, that's just the way the, the rock is, or that's just a ridge or a ledge. I mean, you've got the perfect pointed nose of the aircraft. You've got the wing shape. You've got the fuselage. You've got everything here. And I've pulled up the specs on all three of those aircraft. Now, they're very, very close. The only difference between those aircraft is that the SR-71 and the YF-12 are two-seaters, whereas the A-12 is a one-seater. The SR-71 is about six feet longer. That's pretty much it. That is the only difference. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the ruler on this and show you the measurements first so that you can see them for yourself. And, of course, I'll give you the location. You can go to Google Earth Pro for yourself, and you can measure it and, you know, make your own mind up now. Let me see if I can turn this down just a little bit. Alrighty. Sometimes to get the little screen here with the measurements to show up, there we go. All right, we'll go ahead and measure this. It is right at about what I can see is about 95 feet. Now, the SR-71 is 107 feet. The other two are about 100 feet, but we're looking at this at kind of an angle. So this is real, real close to that. Real close. Now we have a wingspan of about 56, 55, 56 feet, which is right on. Actually, that line isn't really straight. Let me straighten this up. 55.8 feet, roughly, is what I'm measuring, 56 feet. And the wingspan, and I'll show you that when we get there, is roughly 55 feet of those three aircraft. Now, there's also another metric of wing area, and I want to try to measure that for you while we're here. And if I remember right, the wing area was 1,800 square feet. So about 900 per wing. So I'm going to try to just do this one side here, and then we can multiply by two. So roughly, depending on how you look at this, if we call this half, it's a hard metric, but of the visual area, it's right on. It's absolutely right on about where it should be. It's one of the more difficult metrics to measure here. And plus, the shape is unmistakable. 
I'll go ahead and kick this off just so we can get the lights back up so we can show this as clear as we possibly can. Now, let's go to the specs. All right, here's the specs for the A-12. That was the aircraft in the upper right, the CIA version. Length, 101 feet. Wingspan, 55 feet. Wing area, 1,795 square feet. SR-71, the only difference is really the length, 107 feet. The YF-12, 101 feet, literally identical to the other one. There is one aircraft I thought about for a minute that it could possibly be, but it was discontinued, but you know how the CIA is. It was this aircraft called a Convair Kingfish, but it was never really developed, and some of the, the imagery would be wrong for that. It's not quite that. And I can't really, since they never made it, there's no real specs to find out about it. So they flew both of them extensively. Now, the aircraft that I was talking about, that, uh, and here's another good image just to show you the difference between the A-12 and the SR-71, was this aircraft called a B-58 Hustler. Now, this aircraft, the measurements, are almost closer because that aircraft that we found down here is a little bit shorter than 100 feet. This one has a fuselage of only 95 feet. But the problem is, do you see this big rear stabilizer? We don't see that in this. And that's the problem. So that's why I don't think this is a B-58 Hustler. Plus the, the way the flange is here around the, the cockpit. This really, honestly, would be a huge reveal. If somebody said, look, we have a picture of a U.S. spy aircraft on the ice in Antarctica. What's it doing there? And... That's about probably as bright as I can get it to, oh, and of course it goes crazy on me. There we go. But I'll zoom out and show you where this is located. There's no, um, it doesn't look like this crashed. However, this got here, it, uh, there's really no indication that there was any type of a landing per se. Now, we've shown other aircraft in flight down here that kind of look like F-22s, but it's hard to say. But there is one strange story that I'd like to share with you that may explain this, partially explain this. Let me see if I can bring that up here. It's this story about this pilot that lost control of his SR-71 at the edge of space. And I want to read a small excerpt from this, and in the first pinned comment, I'll give you the link, and you can read this for yourself. It's a man named Jim Zweier. Now, I'll jump to the point where he loses control. All right, there we go. All right, everything seemed to unfold in slow motion. I learned later the time from event onset where his um, engine stopped to catastrophic departure from controlled flight was only two to three seconds. Still trying to communicate with Jim, I blacked out, succumbing to extremely high G-forces. The SR-71 then literally dis disintegrated around us. From that point, I was just along for the ride. My next recollection, my next recollection was a hazy thought that I was having a bad dream. Maybe I'll wake up and get out of this mess, I mused. Gradually regaining consciousness, I realized this was no dream it had really happened. That also was disturbing because I could not have survived what had just happened. Therefore, I must be dead. Since I didn't feel bad, just a detached sense of euphoria, I decided being dead wasn't so bad after all. 
As full awareness took hold, I realized I was not dead, but had somehow separated from the airplane. I had no idea how this could have happened. I hadn't initiated an ejection. The sound of rushing air and what sounded like straps flapping in the wind confirmed I was falling, but I couldn't see anything. My pressure suit's faceplate had frozen over and I was staring at a layer of ice. Now here he talks about his descent and landing in Texas and being discovered, but he reveals that his ejection seat never was activated. That he was just pulled out of his aircraft somehow. And before he knew it, what was going on, he felt like it was a dream. And then he was falling and all of a sudden he's in a helicopter and on his way back to the base. Now I know this is a stretch, but that seems like a very... Um, weird way to lose an aircraft. Could it be that maybe some high-tech friends from down there decided they wanted to get their hands on one of those and take a look at what they were doing and how they were doing it? I guess it was, pardon me, test pilot Bill Weaver and test reconnaissance and navigation system specialist Jim Zweier. So the story was being related by Bill Weaver. Uh, Jim, I believe, died, unfortunately, in this accident. So a very, very strange story where a craft was mysteriously lost. An engine quit working and the pilot doesn't remember ejecting, yet he was out of the aircraft and falling and made it to ground perfectly safely. There's not much story about recovering the craft either, which I find odd. I wonder if that's this aircraft. If when they were done studying it, meaning these advanced, I think they personally are under the ice. I don't like calling them extraterrestrials. Because I don't think they're extraterrestrial at all. I think they're just so far advanced that we think they are. And they're from right here. And I know that's a big statement to say, but explain what we're looking at. It's dead ringer for an SR-71. And we have a pilot that was flying one. It malfunctioned and he blacked out. And before he knew it, without the help of an ejection seat, found himself outside the aircraft and shoot deployed and fine. So I'll just leave that there. But uh, what do you guys think? Like, share, subscribe.